How's it going everyone? Uh, I'm back with another video and I've got some hydraulic fittings to make today. <clears throat> um, it's for a friend, it's a, it's a freebie, uh, just doing a favor, but it's always good to do those kinds of things, you know, help people out, uh, you know, save the guy a bunch of money, really, save him from having to go to, uh, well, I don't know. He's looked around at different hydraulics supply companies and hasn't been able to find the fittings that he's needed. So, you know, he got talking to me and I said, all right, yeah, sure, I'll make them up for you. And, uh, you know, that's that's what I've got going on. I've got to mix, I've got to cut some threads. Uh, I've got a, uh, I've got two fittings to make. On each side of the fitting, I've got one, uh, one pitcher of 12 threads per inch and another of 14 threads per inch and uh, one of the ends is going to have uh, flare on it and the other is just going to be a flat you know standard thread to screw into the machine and uh, also with with cutting the threads I've got uh, I've got a mill uh, uh, hexes onto the outside diameter of them so that he can go ahead and use a wrench to tighten them into the machine I'm gonna I'm gonna mill an inch and a quarter hex nut onto the the parts onto the fittings uh, so hang on just a second I'll give you a shot of a couple of fittings down here and uh, give you an idea of what we're working with hang on now this fitting is the one that screws into the machine um, let's see this end is 14 threads per inch, this ends 12 and I've got to, see the problem was is that's a female fitting, uh, female flare right there you know and that's that also is and this somebody just took and, and used this I don't know where it came from but they just threaded this into the machine to to get it to work you know this was into uh, an output line and on that line on that box or whatever it may be there's no flare that fits into this end it just couples in and there's a ceiling washer that sits on that um, here it is right here that's what actually was making the seal you know that would thread in seal up against this washer you'd go ahead and tighten it down so what I've got to do is make a fitting that's got 14 threads per inch on this end. I don't need to worry about the female inside flare. And I need to make this end 12 threads per inch and have uh, this flare on that end. So that this hose, which I cut the hose, I cut the end of it off so that I could get this off of there to use it. So this is going to thread on like that. And allow this hose connection to fit to the machine to, to seal up against the machine but it's going to instead be on this fitting here so um, yeah that's what I got in the store you know I cut this off so that I could use this to grab my my new parts and set them in the vise and I could use this uh, to mill the hexes onto them so that's what I got going on and we'll bring you over to uh, the lathe and kind of give you some some footage on that and show you what's happening. Go ahead and get some tapping fluid on there. I use the Castrol Molly D. Pretty decent stuff. I try not to use too much of it because it's a little on the expensive side. Me having a thread relief on the back side there, I don't have to worry about trying to yank my tool bit out of the thread on time or anything like that. <clears throat>
going to check my diameter. Let, you know, I'm using calipers. Yeah, I know it's not the most highly accurate way of doing it. This doesn't need to be a highly accurate thread, so. So I just went ahead and I, I just ran a file across the top of the threads to break, break the sharp edge, put a little bit of a file chamfer on there. And, uh, you know, as, be as best as I can tell, <clears throat> this is going to go ahead and thread in there. Uh, my, you know, my diameters are the same. I've got an inch 30 thousandths on my outside diameter here. And my threads themselves are lining up. Of course, they're all 14 threads per inch. You know, the depths, the roots and crowns of the threads, when I when I rest these two against each other are tight right up one against one another you know I can't really see any light in in behind them uh, so you know without making a nut and without having the machine here to thread this into it um, I'm gonna go with that and really I think that it's gonna work just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and flip the part around and I'm going to work on getting this diameter turned down to size and I get to put 12 threads per inch on this side. So I'll uh, get this back on in, in a minute here and we'll get a little bit more of the, the action going on. Alright, here we go. I got it flipped around. <clears throat> I just took a pass, half a pass on there. I'm going to just go ahead and bring it back in, let it start feeding, we'll get this down to 1 inch 30 thousandths. speed steel tool bit here. It works pretty good. Not a bunch of tool pressure on it with, like you'd have with a carbide. Just taking a nice light smooth cut. Now I'm taking the uh, Thirty thousandths per pass on the uh, on the radius. So I'm, I'm taking sixty thousandths in total on the diameter. this up, get it to diameter, and I'll bring the camera back in when it's when it's to size and I'm about to start threading. <clears throat> I got the part sitting in the mill right now. Uh, I had a I had a small mishap over there when I was trying to cut this set of threads on this part and uh, my my uh, th threading tool fetched up on the part and uh, ripped it right out of the jaws on me and just wrecked the threads that I had there and caused all kinds of havoc for me so I just went I wasn't gonna make this thing again so I just went ahead and welded up my threads and uh, I took and I, I made the other the other fitting already that fitting's done <clears throat> and I'm gonna go ahead and show you the process with this one now I've got these threads turned on the other end of this one and I've got it threaded into uh, the actual fitting itself that will go onto the line so that way I can use the existing hex on the uh, old fitting to turn or to mill the new hex onto uh, the new part. So I'm going to show you that real quick. And after that, I'm going to go ahead and 
chuck this back up in the lathe and I'm going to get this all turned back down to size and go ahead and cut a new set of threads on there. So here we go. I'm going to start cutting cutting my uh, flats onto this to form the, the hex nut. It's going to be inch and a quarter diameter. I'm taking 75 thousandths off of each each side to form the flat. speed a little bit. I'm running in low range because it's at a speed where if I run it in high range it's just a bit too fast at the low speed. In low range I really got to kind of crank it to get the RPM up where I need it. My end mill's pretty worn out as well. The sides of the fluids are fairly sharp, but the bottom of this isn't so hot. Turn the, turn the light on on the camera, get a little bit more light on there, get you a view of this last pass over the, the uh, hex nut. Six sides cut. Um, it's an inch and a quarter nut. I cut it just a little bit on the underside so you can fit a wrench on there with no problem. You know, it's about inch two twenty right now. Uh, I just, you know, whatever wrench you may have, whether it's a cheap piece of crap or, you know, a snap on, whatever. I just want to be able to get the open end on the wrench or open end on the on the nut, tighten it up in there, you know, with no problems. So. That's done. <clears throat> that nut is cut on there. I'm going to go ahead and take this fitting off. I'm going to throw this thing in the lathe and grab it by the hex right here. 
and I'm going to turn down all this built up weld I got on there and I'm going to go ahead and get this one finished up. So here we are over at the lathe. I got this thing sitting in the chuck and uh, got my live center in, in there. I'm just going to go ahead and use my threading tool and uh, put a quick chamfer on this side and I'm going to flip it around and get started on uh, bringing that back down to size and getting some threads put on it. Here we go. There we go. I got a chamfer on the side of my nut. Actually, I'm going to put a little bit bigger chamfer on there. That's good. I know it's squawking and squealing, but for this quick little thing that I was doing, I don't care. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and flip this around, and we'll get started on the other side. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this thing spinning. <clears throat> I'm going to touch off here with my tool. i got a high-speed steel tool in there. You know, it's pretty good at cutting weld. Doesn't put a whole lot of pressure in there, especially where I'm not holding on to this thing by much. I don't want to put a, a bunch of tool pressure on it. Uh, I'm going to bring this down to... Uh, Oh, what do I want to be? It, uh, one inch. Well, hang on. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Inch 35 thousandths. So we get that thing to size and uh, we'll move on. Alright, there we go. Good touch off with my tool. Feeds a little bit fast. I'm gonna, I'm gonna back that off. Take an hour or so and level this machine out. Get the shake out of it so it's not bouncing around all over the place every time I'm trying to cut. It doesn't do it on everything. You just, you know, if I've got a piece that's out of balance, boy, it really, really affects it. inch 33. I'm going to call that good on my diameter. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm not even bothering with a mic. This doesn't need to be super accurate. And I'm going to go ahead and clean up this face and then I'll get in here with uh, my parting tool and get that all straightened out and cleaned up too.
turn this over just a little bit more and uh, I get a chamfer on that corner to start my thread. BS right there from the weld. I might go ahead and put a heavier chamfer on that and take a little bit more off the face. I need to get that cleaned up right there. good I still get a little bit a little bit of a pit right there and that's gonna be just fine I'll leave that where it is <clears throat> okay so I'm gonna go ahead and swap my tools over throw my uh, farting tool in there and get the rest of the mess cleaned up on this thing there we go Get over here on the side. I'm going to come and clean this back side up, and I'm going to come in right over here and clean this mess. And uh, I'll go ahead and just I'm just going to straighten the whole thing out. You know, I'm not I'm not going to try and make this real pretty or anything like that. You know, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and leave the back side rough the way that it is. And I'm going to cut the thread right onto it, and it's going to and that's how it's going to be. I'm going to get to get to working on this thing here. And that's it. That's going to be more than adequate. You know, I still get some pits back here. It's a little bit low, but I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to just take a file, throw a quick chamfer on the back side of that, and I'm going to just go ahead and change over my threading tool, and I'm going to start putting threads on this thing. switch over my threading tool, get set up, uh, get a center in here so I got some support and uh, we're gonna get to it. Alright, I brought you back in. Here we go. So I'm set up. I got my threading tool in there. <coughs> Sitting on uh, 29 and a half degrees. Tail stocks in place. Uh, live center. Everything's good to go. I got my zero set. I'm gonna make a light scratch pass and check it with my thread pitch gauge and uh, then we're gonna move on. Here we go. Okay. 
Give that a quick check. All right, we're sitting right on 14 threads per inch, so we're good. Give this a little loop. Let's cut some threads. kind of leave that as is. I'm going to hit the tops of these threads of the file real quick just to smooth them. No, Take no material off. Uh, I'm going to put a chamfer on the end of that, a chamfer on that right there, and then I've got to put a 5 8 hole through the whole thing, and this part will be completed. Okay, so hang on just a minute and I'll bring you back when I'm doing a little bit more. Alright, so I'm going to, I hit that end real quick and I'm going to hit that real fast, and we're going to move on to uh, drilling the hole in this thing. Here we go. Alright, that's going to work. I'm going to go ahead and break this down, get my chuck and my bit in there, and uh, we'll get a hole in it. Okay, guys, here we go. We're, uh, we're set back up to drill the hole in this thing, 5 8 bit. Uh, going to put it right on through the entire thing. And then I'll go ahead and put a chamfer on this end, flip it around, chamfer on the other end, this part's going to be done. So, here we go. Clean that thing up. Right. 
So this end's done. I'm going to spin it around and just put a quick chamfer on the other side. And then this part's going to be done. Here we go, quick chamfer the other end. Okay, <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just hit that with a wire brush real quick to clean up the threads. Alright, so there we have it. Alright, she's all machined up, ready to go. I'm going to clean it up a little bit and I'll bring you in and I'll show you both completed parts. Okay guys, there we have it. Got my two fittings done. They're all cleaned up, looking pretty good. You know, I got the hexes cut on there. I got a 12 uh, thread per inch and a 14 thread per inch on each side. good to go and uh, you know I think that I think that the customer will be happy with them so not too bad so that's uh, that's the end of this this episode <clears throat> you know I needed to just get those fittings made up there and uh, I did that I got that out of the way and I've got a couple of other odds and ends to move on to. Um, I've got uh, a 2x72 belt grinder that I'm trying to get finished. Well, I mean, I'm not trying to. I haven't touched it lately. I need to get on it. I need to get it done, completed, built. And uh, I've got a couple of things left to go on the rotary table project. Get it done so I can start using that thing the way that I would like to uh, yeah that's pretty much it hope you guys liked watching and uh, we'll catch you next time please uh, if you like this video please go ahead and subscribe comment and give it a thumbs up and uh, I appreciate all of it so thank you and uh, we'll see you next time.